People go crazy over pandas all over the world. Now, there are more than 30 pandas living in 13 countries. But how are they selected? Who gets to travel overseas? We went back with Bao Bao to her hometown Chengdu, a city embedded in the mountains and waters of southwestern China, to find out. When we make the selection, we must first choose a pair of pandas without any genetic defects. That's the first and foremost important thing. Second, they must be physically healthy. Third, mentally healthy. And lastly, we consider physical appearance and body shape. After passing these selections, we would give some time to see if their personalities fit with each other. Only then we decide whether to send them. For those pandas lucky enough to be selected, they have a lot more preparation to do before the trip. They have to pass the quarantine, overcome jet lag, and get used to the weather change and local tastes. Pandas are like people. They can eat as many as 30 different types of bamboos, but they all taste differently. Pandas are stubborn. They don't like to try new types of bamboos after they get used to the local Szechuan bamboos. From a nutritional point of view, all are about the same. It usually takes about a month for them to adjust to new bamboo's taste. I always tell them it's just like a taste switch from Chinese food to Western food. In addition to adjusting to local tastes, pandas who travel abroad are often bilingual. According to the agreement with China, all panda cubs born overseas must return to China by the age of four. Bao Bao is one of them. I've been a keeper for 15 years. And quite frankly, being a part of Bao Bao's journey from a cub to this trip to China has been the most amazing thing I've ever been a part of. It even started before she was born. I got to go to China to learn the techniques that they use with their cubs. And then I've been with her for basically her entire life. And now I get to take her back to China, uh, which I think is an amazing experience for me. Bao Bao also took time to adjust when she was back in China. First is the language. If you called to her to come over and eat in a Sichuan dialect, she would not respond to you. But if you said coming, she would come over right away. After a week, she got used to the local dialect. It's just a conditioned reflex. Bao Bao also took time to adjust when she came back to China. She smelled scents to figure out her surroundings first, then she had to use her own scent to remove existing scents to mark the place. Gradually, she made her adjustments and calmed down. She started to trust us. She did excellent on the flight. She ate and slept and, and you know, did all the things we would expect. She, she had a great flight. She's going to hopefully just stay and kind of get her comfortable with her new surroundings and her new keepers. She is doing great and is very healthy. To transport pandas to different countries, the hardest work relies on the giant panda expert team. It takes several months before those precious pandas finally get used to their new life. For this reason, being a panda keeper is really a fortunate job, and we are honored to interview one of them. My name is Lu Zhuan. I'm a panda keeper at the China Conservation and Research Center for Giant Pandas. Pandas don't understand where they're going or how far they have to travel. 
Once they arrive to a new place, they feel very stressed. There are many new things for them to adapt to. So during this time, panda keepers must spend extra time to guide, accompany, and comfort them to make them feel safe. As of right now, I have taken care of many pandas who were sent to different locations. Every time pandas were sent to a new place, just when they felt comfortable and without stress in their new surroundings, I had to depart. It is so hard to leave them. Because it would be more than at least 10 years until they come back, just the thought about this long separation makes me feel sad. People often see that we get to have close interactions with the pandas. We can hold them, we can kiss them, and we can play with them. We actually do so much more just to have the chance to interact with them for a few minutes each day. Most of our times, we take care of bamboos. Each panda needs close to 100 pounds of bamboos a day. This is a very physically demanding task. Pandas respond well to us because we are around them and interact with them every day. They are used to our voices and our scents, so they react to our calls. During feeding time, they gaze adoringly at you with their beautiful eyes. Then you feel like all the hours of hard labor are worth it. You feel a sense of accomplishment and you are happy. My son is three and a half, and he is about the same age as several of the pandas I'm taking care of now. People often ask me, who is more difficult? <laughs> I would say they are all difficult. Pandas cannot speak, so they communicate through their mannerisms and behavior. When they feel stressed, they would pace nonstop and pant heavily. Sometimes they even roar in anger. Because they can't speak, we must frequently monitor their behavior so they understand them better. A lot of times, they really are like children. You get what you pay for. 
Like raising children, we must spend time with them and correct each bad behavior, teach them repeatedly to do one thing. The same applies to pandas. I have been taking care of pandas for many years. It is the same as raising children. I am tired, but happy. I hope I can continue my job of raising pandas like raising my own children, growing up healthy and happy together. While pandas are peacefully enjoying their lives and populations are on the rise now, it wasn't always this way. Habitat loss and starvation left pandas critically endangered. Lifting pandas out of the threat of extinction has been a decades-long process. Jiang Humin, also known as the Panda Papa, has been working with scientists from around the world to crack the code of giant panda reproduction in captivity. The worst time was in the 1990s. It was really difficult to breed pandas. Only 20% of all pandas came into estrus. Pregnancy rate was so low, about 20% in estrus ever got pregnant. After birth, survival rate was lower than 30%. The whole giant panda population was at risk. Originally, we treated pandas on an eight-hour feeding schedule, thinking they are like humans. We later realized that we were wrong. Because pandas in the wild would eat, defecate and sleep almost simultaneously for about 16 hours a day. Pandas are not like us humans. We must take care of them following their own habits. Another important factor was that pandas not only should have physical health, but also mental health, like us humans. We spent a lot of effort on pandas' mental health. We played with them, communicated and talked to them. We pet them. We tried to make them feel like we were their friends so they could feel relaxed. We also followed pandas' own schedules and changed their feeding times to small meals multiple times throughout the whole 24-hour day. Slowly, pandas' mental and physical health improved. It took us 20 years to solve these three major problems. From then on, the pandas' population has increased drastically, from eight pandas in the early 90s to 270 as of now. This is a great achievement. I volunteered myself to work in the panda conservation after graduating from college in 1983. That year, large areas of bamboos died after flowering in that area, and many pandas had died. Where I worked in a mountainous area was the first national conservation center for giant pandas. This was how I started my destiny with pandas. Now, it's been 35 years. My name is Zhang Hermen, Deputy Director at the China Conservation and Research Center for Giant Panda. Many people call me Panda Papa. The Panda Papa story started like this. Each time when a panda was giving birth, after mom's water broke, we would all wait in the delivery room, ready for the birth of panda babies. When we heard the baby's first cry, we would be so excited, jumping up and down in the delivery room. We would toast to celebrate it that night. We did that also for their one-month birth celebration. 
Our bliss in life is all tied with Panda's happiness. My whole life's inspiration is to breed as many pandas and then release them back into the wild. For those pandas that contribute less genetically to the panda's population, we try to manually train and release them back into the wild. I proposed this project back in 2004. I selected Xiong Xiong from the twin pandas to be part of the program. We taught him how to look for bamboo, water. We taught him to climb trees and how to recognize predators. After two years of training, we released him into the wild. I was so happy that he survived by himself for seven months. I thought it worked, but this was not the case. He was a male, so he had a fight for his territory. He got beat up by his peers and chased up a tree, and he fell and died. I was heartbroken. The death of Shang Shang devastated Panda Papa and put him under tremendous pressure. He was more than a panda. He was his child having raised the cub from birth. Many people think pandas are national treasures. They can live happily in captivity. So how could you train and release them and let them die in the wild? People may not realize a panda's real home is roaming free in their natural habitat. I know often pandas might die in the process. Xiong Xiong's death is a strong lesson to show us that this was not working and we had to try a different method. The new approach of mother panda training cubs is working now. Xiong Xiong's death brought us to success. Sacrifice by Xiong Xiong is extremely valuable. There would be no success without failure. We will keep working on it. This is very significant. The giant panda is a symbol, a representation of all rare species. Our conservations for the giant pandas represents conservations of the whole ecosystem and biodiversity. When we promote giant pandas conservation, we actually conserve the entire ecosystem and biodiversity represented by the giant pandas. The panda is a good-natured animal. The panda's ancestors were carnivorous. Pandas became vegetarian and are now a symbol for peace. Pandas are adored by people around the world. There's no doubt pandas touch the lives of all those who come in contact with them. The story of Bao Bao, born in America, now living happily in China, is a testament to the hard work of those who take care of her daily. The dedication of Panda Papa, all the scientists and keepers, and the pandas themselves inspire the world to care and love our Mother Earth. I am honored to be a panda researcher in this life. Like I just said, my lifelong goal is to breed pandas and release them back to the wild. I am halfway there now. But the rest is just started. I don't know how many years it will take. I may not be able to finish it. But my friends and teammates will continue this work. Generation after generation, we will eventually achieve our goal.